So now that we're set up and ready with our channels, we need to figure out our content plan. In this module, we'll go over how to make it easier and faster to create good, high quality content. We'll look to create a content calendar to align with our overall marketing plan, along with some regular tasks that we should be looking to keep on top of with our social media activity. Content is the beating heart of social media, and it's critical that we generate content that is high quality, engaging, and provides value to our audience. This can be really hard when we're busy. When it comes to creating content, it can be difficult to decide from all of the things that we can talk about, what should we talk about? And that's where a good content plan and potentially a content planning framework comes in. So we're gonna showcase an example of a framework that can help you to create large amounts of content quicker and easier while still keeping everything on message. So this framework has three levels, content pillars, content topics, and content triggers. Let's have a look at each one in detail. Content pillars. So these are your top level content topics that you as a brand want to talk about. They can be tied to your brand values, but they should also be related to the things and topics that your target audience wants to see. We're only gonna have three pillars, so make sure that they're broad enough to be broken down at a later stage. Content topics. These are the more specific topics that nest under a content pillar. By splitting our content pillars into topics, we give ourselves a wide range of things to discuss with our audience, but by being able to tie them back to the content pillars, we know that everything is on brand, on message, and meaningful. Content triggers. This is where we're getting down to the specific ideas for content, hence the name triggers. This is where we do most of our brainstorming. And as long as a trigger relates back to a topic and then back to one of our pillars, we can sense check that this idea is right for our content calendar. Now, I want you to pause here and have a think about what content topics that you want to talk about on social media and what your audiences want to hear from you. From there, start to put together your pillars and content topics. Once you have the first draft of those written down, let's move on to building a content calendar. Now, an important thing to note here is that any framework or content calendar should be treated as a living document and should be revisited frequently. This way we can make sure that our topics and pillars are still relevant and that they're resonating with our target audiences. Don't be afraid to change things up. So once we know what we're gonna talk about, we can start planning our content calendar. Planning content ahead of time and creating content in batches is one of the best ways to up your social media game and stop spending so much time on last minute posts that aren't the best representation of you and your business. Now, when developing a content calendar, here are some things that we should take into account. Seasonal content and trend relevant content. Plan for seasonal events, holidays, and trending topics in days of the year that are relevant to your business. This keeps your content fresh and relatable. Upcoming product launches, campaigns, and collaborations that can be leveraged on social media. Also consistency, maintain a consistent posting schedule. Regularity is key to keeping our audience engaged and algorithmically favored. Use evergreen content. Reuse or repurpose evergreen content to maximize its value and reach. Not all content needs to be created from scratch. Also plan a variety of content types such as blog posts, videos, infographics, user-generated content and promotional posts. Keep a healthy balance between informative, entertaining and promotional content. So once we've scheduled out our content calendar in broad strokes, we can use the content planning framework we put together previously to actually go away and create the content ahead of time. You'll find an example content calendar in your downloadable resources with this section. So once we have our content batched and planned out, it's time to actually schedule it. Most platforms have some form of content scheduling built into them. And if you're managing, say, a Facebook and Instagram page, then the native scheduling tools might be the easiest for you to use. So let's have a look at what the native scheduling tools look like from within Meta. So I'm here on my Facebook page and normally I would create content by going through this what's on your mind dialogue. However, it can show me down here that if I want to schedule my post, I need to go to Meta Business Suite. So I click that link and it's going to take us through to the Meta Business Suite, which is the business management side of Facebook pages. And we can see here we've landed on the content planner and we can view this planner either by week or by month and it'll show us all of the content that we've already posted, but we can also schedule content ahead of time. So I'm gonna to choose to schedule a post for say next week, click this little plus button and it gives me the option to create different kinds of posts. And I'm gonna click schedule post. 
So the first thing it's going to do is actually going to recommend times based on when my audience is most active. So I'm actually going to take its advice and I'm going to create a post for the 26th of September at 7 p.m. because that's when it's telling me my audience is most online and most active. So when I'm creating this post, I get the option to either create a post just for my Facebook page. I can also choose to post to my Instagram account as well because I've got that linked. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to choose my media. I'm going to add a photo. And then I'm going to write some text. And so I can actually have the same text going across both posts, or I can choose to customize and have different ones for Facebook and for Instagram. You may want to do this if you want to maybe add hashtags into the Instagram, or if you want to take them out for Facebook, for example, or you just want them to look slightly different. So then when we scroll down here, we can see I actually have also discrete scheduling times. So I can choose to schedule each of those posts to go out at different times. So they're not completely copied over from, from each other, uh, but I'm gonna leave those as they are. And then I click the schedule button. So once I've clicked that, it's gonna schedule my post for me. And it's now gonna take us back to our calendar. And if we look, we can see on the 26th of September, we now have that post scheduled in there. However, if you're scheduling across Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, maybe even a bit of LinkedIn in there for good measure, you may want to consider a third party scheduling tool. There are a huge range of them out there, but some of the most popular ones include Hootsuite, Buffer, and Sprout Social. I'm going to show you how a platform called Sched Social works just as an example. Let's have a look. Okay, so I am here in Sched Social and I'm going to schedule a post. So I'm in the calendar view. I'm going to choose a day that I want to schedule this post for. And this opens the post creation box. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the accounts that I'm going to work on. So I'm going to choose the Marsh LinkedIn, Google My Business, Facebook and Instagram accounts. So from here, we then create our post as normal. So I choose a piece of media. I'm going to write a test caption. And then from there, I go down into the different platform specific parts here. So I can write maybe a hashtag in first comment for Instagram if I want to. I can also go and edit the posts individually, but I'm going to stick with all of these. So then I'm going to scroll down and there's a required topic type because I've got Google My Business in here as well. So I'm going to choose a standard topic. And then once we've done all of the bits and pieces that we need to do, I can have a quick check of the preview of my post, see how it's gonna look, very nice. And then I can save it. And so what it'll do is it will create individual posts for each of these accounts, and you can now see them on my timeline. So then when nine o'clock on that day comes along, those posts will all get posted to those individual accounts. The specific features and prices will vary by platform. But what they all have in common is the ability to create and schedule content across all your different social platforms from one place. Some of them even allow you to manage comments and DMs as well, giving you a one-stop shop for managing all your social media. If you're going to try these tools, finding one that suits you and fits with your workflow will take a little bit of trial and error. But once you've got the right one, it can make your life so much easier. Once you put your content out there, it can be tempting to think that the job is done. But on social media, it's only just the beginning. Engaging with your audience is a key task that should have time dedicated to it. Here's a few reasons why it's important to set aside time for proper community management. So with brand research, potential customers use social media as a way to research brands and products before making a purchase, and they will use social media as a place to ask questions. If you aren't there to answer them, you're potentially losing customers, and having unanswered questions all over your latest post isn't a great look either. Now, social media has become one of the key places customers go to if they have a customer service issue. It can take the form of a grumpy comment on a post or a private message looking for a solution. Engaging with these negative comments in a way that provides a positive customer service resolution is a great way to show that your business actually cares about its customers. And finally, it's called social media, so be social. Engaging where relevant also helps generate more engagement. This signals to the platform that your content and your businesses are high quality. This will help the algorithm recognize you for the quality creator that you are and serve your content more frequently and further. 
So now that we've given ourselves a bit of breathing space by getting ahead in our content creation, we can start to plan our time more effectively and put together a few tasks that we should be doing on the regular. So your daily tasks could include things like community management. So you wanna check all of the public comments and private messages to make sure that there aren't any outstanding queries that need responding to. Now a quick tip here, always prioritize customer queries and negative comments over positive ones to avoid dogpiling. Next, you wanna check your current ads. If you're using paid media, it always pays to have a quick check-in each morning to make sure they're running as expected. Now resist the urge to make lots of changes, but monitoring is fine. Now some weekly tasks could include content brainstorms. So depending on how far ahead you want to batch create content, you may plan your ideas a week or a fortnight ahead. Whether this task falls into the weekly or monthly task list, it's important to calendarize time for it and give it focus. Otherwise you could very easily fall behind again. Now some of your monthly tasks could include monitoring and reporting. Once a month is a great time to stop and reflect on how you tracked against your key objectives. Review the performance of your recent posts and track some key metrics such as reach, engagement, click-through rates and conversions to assess the effectiveness of your content. We'll discuss this in a bit more detail in the next module. Also some high level planning ahead. Even if you're not doing specific content brainstorming each month, have a look ahead in your content calendar to make sure that you're including and planning for all the relevant dates in your next brainstorm. Is Black Friday coming up this month? Start planning now. Also, if you have a team working with you to manage your social media, monthly is a great chance to get together and review the month just passed. Check out the reports, discuss any curly community management issues, and see what learnings you can take forward and make sure that you're all on the same page. And finally, yearly tasks. Now these could include things like a content framework review. So once a year is a great time to look back at the results for our content and see what's been resonating with our audience and what hasn't. Do we need to change out the topics under a certain pillar? Does a pillar need to go all together? This gives us a chance to learn from past performance and keep improving over time. It's also a great time for a strategy review. So it's the best time to look back at everything that we've done over the last year and see what learnings we can take from the past as a whole. Did we achieve our goals? If not, what can we learn from what we did to help iterate and improve in the future? So to sum up this section, here are some key takeaways. Use a content planning framework to batch create content ahead of time so that you can think strategically. Schedule your content ahead of time as well, whether that's with the built-in tools of the platforms or a third-party one. Then decide on a structured set of tasks to create and review content and your strategy as a whole, then set time aside to work on it.